Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, this mic's really low. Um, so my name is Jacob Phipps. I do the technology and communications here at the Northern Wake Senior Center. And for this last lecture, um, Samantha, who isn't here today, unfortunately, she got her schedules mixed up, couldn't make it for her presentation, but I had her go ahead and record over her slides. Um, so I'm gonna basically be going along with the slides and she'll be talking over all of them. So um, hopefully you guys can get some useful information out of this and I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Dickinson. I am the Greater Triangle Outreach and Training Coordinator for the Brain Injury Association of North Carolina. And for Falls Prevention Awareness Week, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about brain injuries and concussions and their relation to falls and maybe some strategies that you can use to help prevent uh, brain injuries and concussions. So what is the significance of the connection between TBI and falls? So falls are an everyday risk for one in four adults over the age of 65. Um, that risk is preventable. If a fall does occur, the impact can be significant. So what exactly is a concussion? A concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury that occurs when the brain is affected by a direct blow to the head. The brain can move rapidly back and forth, which can cause it to bounce or twist in the skull. This can lead to chemical changes in the brain and sometimes damaged brain cells. So why exactly is this so important? A lot of people feel that if they don't see blood or they don't suspect a broken bone, that there is no need to seek medical attention. Concussions are serious, but they are also invisible injuries. You don't always know that you have had a concussion. So while it is important to know how to prevent falls, it is also important to recognize instances in which a fall has resulted in a concussion and that you should seek medical help. So to touch on some concussion facts, like said in the previous slide, concussions a lot of times are considered an invisible injury, and that is because the signs of concussions are not always super obvious. A lot of times they can include unusual symptoms like sadness, um, maybe repeating questions, tingling, and even um, issues with falling asleep. So these can be symptoms of anything, but if you know you have fallen and maybe hit in your head or hit your head, then that can definitely be a sign of a concussion. Symptoms may also take up to a day to appear after the incident. So if you did have a fall the previous day and start experiencing um, funny symptoms, you know, maybe think about, oh, I did hit my head yesterday. Um, and that might be a reason for those symptoms and um, a reason for you to get checked up. Uh, a concussion also doesn't always have to cause unconsciousness. You know, you may have a concussion and have these other symptoms, but not lose consciousness. And that um, can definitely be a concussion as well. So I just wanted to touch on a little bit of the effects of a mild traumatic brain injury or a concussion. So you definitely have different parts of the brain that control different functions. So for example, uh, thinking and remembering, you may have trouble thinking clearly, you might feel slowed down or have difficulty concentrating. Um, definitely different difficulty remembering new information is something that um, may you may experience after a concussion. Uh, for emotional and mood, you may become more irritable. Uh, maybe you are more sad or are just more emotional um, in general. And also anger can definitely be a symptom as well. Uh, for physical and sensations, headaches is, are definitely common. Uh, imbalance or dizziness, um, you know, such as vertigo, fuzzy or blurry vision, and then different sensitivities such as to light or noise uh, are also uh, some symptoms that you should be aware of. Uh, sleep disturbance, so you may be sleeping more or less than usual. You might have trouble falling asleep or trouble staying asleep. So that's also just one other symptom that you might um, look into if you think that you have had a concussion. 
So prevention is obviously a priority. When it comes to mortality, rates are higher among older adults and those with chronic illnesses such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, et cetera. Uh, for functional outcomes, uh, there are less favorable with greater age, so higher than 65 years of age. Uh, also, a longer period of rehabilitation and higher levels of disability. When it comes to cognition, um, accelerated cognitive decline from the original brain injury is a risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease, as well as other dement dementias. So now we are going to talk about some common environmental fall risk factors. So some of these might include inadequate lighting. So just making sure, you know, in your house or wherever you live, that the lighting is light enough for you to be able to see while you are walking around, you know, during the day, opening those blinds, those curtains, allowing that natural light in. Um, if, you know, at night, you're noticing that, you know, one light is just not bright enough, you know, maybe adding a second light or bringing in a lamp um, just to be able to see the flooring um, and make sure you can find your way around uh, without the um, possibility of tripping and falling. Uh, wet or slippery floors, you know, if you notice that you make a spill, definitely try and clean that up right away. Because if you do not and you, you know, go do something before and then come back, you might not remember that you had that spill and then that can definitely lead to a risk of falls. Uh, uneven flooring, you know, this can happen, you know, outside with, you know, sidewalks. So, you know, just being aware of um, the flooring. And uh, if in your house you notice that there is uneven flooring, you know, trying try to address it then. Um, and then, you know, looking down at the floors if you're walking outside and just don't feel as comfortable um, with the flooring or ground situation. Um, and adequate use of uh, adaptive equipment. This basically just means, you know, if you have adaptive equipment that you use, that you are making sure you're using it correctly. Uh, if you are not um, or do not know how to use it correctly, reach out to someone who can teach you. That way you are um, able to use it the correct way because it is common that people who use adaptive equipment in the wrong way can have a higher risk of falling. Some common internal risk factors that you should be aware of, uh, you know, maybe vision difficulties, medications, so being aware of um, the different side effects, which we'll go into on a later slide, um, impaired balance, and then pre-existing medical conditions, kind of like the ones we talked about um, in a prior slide, you know, such as cancer and diabetes. Going into prevention strategies to help commit falls and ultimately mild traumatic brain injuries and concussions. So medications, I would definitely um, encourage you to contact a pharmacist or your doctor and ask them about the side effects of the medications you're taking. A lot of times uh, medications can have side effects such as dizziness, and dizziness is obviously a risk factor for falling. So maybe if there's an alternative medication you can take or um, another medication you can take with it that can help prevent that dizziness. Uh, as for vision, just getting those regular vision checkups, um, you know, going to the doctor if you're starting to notice vision issues. Uh, for cognitive changes, avoid multitasking and take breaks to prevent uh, cognitive fatigue. So some more prevention strategies uh, for home hazards. You know, just removing boxes, newspapers, anything that appears to be in the way on the floor, um, in walkways, uh, just removing those items. That way you are um, preventing the chance of tripping. Uh, wearing the right shoes. Uh, this is also another risk factor for tripping. Uh, you know, choosing shoes that have non-slip soles, uh, maybe good support, and also just fit properly. Uh, eating healthy meals, so uh, this is not always something that you would think of, but nutritious meals keep up strength and resistance and balance. 
So that is just another easy way to help prevent falls. So one of the last prevention strategies that I wanted to look at um, was exercise to avoid falls. So strength and balance training and walking can help prevent falls. Uh, you may want to target specific muscle groups to provide stability, and then increased muscle mass and bone density offer protection. I have just a few uh, examples that you can look at if you wanted to try different exercise to um, prevent falls from happening. So this one is called weight shifting, and this is where you're standing with your feet uh, at hip width apart. You're shifting your weight to one side, lifting your opposite foot off the floor, um, and this guy will kind of show you exactly what that exercise looks like. Standing tall in good posture, slowly transfer your weight from side to side. Standing tall in good posture, step forward and transfer your weight onto your front leg. Repeat with the other leg. Step forward, stand tall whilst tapping your foot behind you. Repeat on the other leg. So standing marches are another exercise that you can practice. You can use a counter, a desk, um, anything that's, you know, kind of a surface that is, I guess, a little uh, shorter than you um, that you can use and put your hands on. And I will let the video kind of tell you how to do that exercise. This exercise is marching on the spot and standing. Again, nice and close to the countertop, feet about shoulder width apart. So we'll start by marching, alternating the feet for about 10 seconds, and then having a rest. So again, the height is up to you. The lower the height, the easier. The higher the height that you lift, the harder. So there's about 10 seconds. I'll show you a harder version. So again, you're just lifting a little bit higher. Be aware of where your counter is and don't hit your shin or your knee on the counter, of course. And you're just trying to lift as high as you can. So about 10 seconds, have a rest. The way to make this a little bit more challenging is to lift, hold less and less on the counter. Lastly, uh, sit to stand. So you will be standing tall with your back facing a sturdy chair and your feet hip width apart. You will sit back slowly, lowering your hips onto the chair as gently as possible. And then without swinging your torso, you will push through your heels to stand up. And this video will show you exactly how to do that. Slide your bottom forwards in the chair. Using the armrest, push yourself back into a standing position. Slowly lower yourself back down into the chair. And repeat again. Mm -hmm. 
One thing I did want to mention is to stop exercising if you start to feel dizzy. Maybe you become super out of breath or you're having any type of pain. Do not overexert yourself. It is okay to take breaks. It is okay to sit down and rest. Uh, you know, you do not need to overexert yourself by any means. You know, you go at your own pace. So just be aware of that when you are exercising. So just to talk a little bit about safety at home or in a facility, um, you know, stairs and steps, just being aware, are there uneven surfaces? Are there things on the stairs that can be removed? Um, for floors, you know, removing things from the floors, we kind of already talked about that previously. Uh, in your bedroom, we'll look more into that on the prevention checklist. Uh, bathrooms, and then kitchen as well. So just to summarize, falls are the most common cause of traumatic brain injury overall, uh, especially in older adults and young children. There are both environmental and internal risk factors that you should be aware of. This can include uneven surfaces or flooring, medication side effects, um, and other instances such as lighting in the house or environment that you live in. There are many strategies to prevent falls. Uh, these can include speaking with a doctor or pharmacist about medication side effects, removing hazards from your home or in your room, and also exercising to build strength and balance. Um, I just want to thank you all for letting me present to you guys on Falls Awareness Prevention Week. And um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and, um, you know, happy Falls Prevention Awareness. <laughs>